I want to talk to you guys today about the frequency in your gravity flyer. How many are there? Why are they there? And what do they do? So, let's look at it real simply. There are seven frequencies in it, and what it actually is going to do is make a symphony of sound when it's done. Let's start by identifying five easiest ones there is to identify. One, rotation on a plate. We know that we have a piece of brass stuck on a plate, like this. Every time it makes a rotation, it makes a sound. Go faster, it makes a different sound. Go slower, it makes a different sound. We know that every sound has a frequency. You have two plates. Pretty simple, right? One frequency, two frequency. Let's go to the third. We have a third plate, the center plate. We know that that has a resonance frequency in it. We all try to hit that resonance point. Now, I put tuning forks on my gravity flyer so that you guys can hear it. What's the problem with the tuning forks today? We have the wrong numbers. Olden days, tune in A was different than the tune in A today. That's going to become very important in frequency. If you don't know it, you're going to miss the mark here. You say, well, I could just go out and buy one on Amazon. It says 440 on it, and it says from Google, hey, that's the right frequency. Well, no, it's just not. 432 hertz was the original frequency. 440, 440 is the acceptable frequency now. Hey, what's going on here? They changed the frequencies on you. Now, when you put it on your guitar or something, is it going to sound much different? To most people out there, it isn't. But for those who have those ears that can hear everything, it's going to sound completely different. What's the difference in it to us? The resonance value is the difference. You must match the exact frequency to the exact frequency of the material, which means the number in resonance value is different. So if you put the wrong tuning fork onto the gravity flyer, you may get close or you may miss it altogether. Why I show you the things with the mic, I want you to hear I'm moving that tuning fork in different places. Why? I want to make sure that all the material is the same. Sometimes you get aluminum that has copper on the inside. These people at these hardware stores, they don't care about that. They care about the finish. What do I care about? I care about what the material actually is. Want that resonance value. We're going to have to go back to the old charts of frequency to get it. That's where we're going to get back to where it was in nature and they witnessed it. And then now they put just whatever they want or whatever they think is good. It's a whole conspiracy thing going on. To me anyway. To other people, uh, who cares, right? But when you get into it and you try to find a resonance value, you better know that. Okay. All right. Enough of that. We now got three. Top plate, bottom plate, center plate. Okay. Pretty easy to figure out. Now let's go on to the Tesla coil. We know the Tesla coil makes a frequency. That's what they do. Okay, we all see the sparks. We don't want any sparks on our Tesla coil in this experiment. We simply want the frequency. We know that it creates one. Is it different than our center plate? Well, the actual answer is yes and no. And there's a way to see that. So, we see things measured in hertz. Then we see the Tesla coils measured in kilohertz. How do we get to kilohertz from hertz? Well, you multiply your hertz number by two. Every time you get to that next value, multiply it again by two until you get to the kilohertz. What are you going to find? That that little number here coincides with that little number here. It's best to describe it in a pulse rate. Every time it goes up on your oscilloscope and down. So every time you get to this point here, that's a pulse rate. And then you multiply it out till you get to this one. You'll find they go together. This one hits a bunch. This one hits once. That's all it is. That's as simple as I can put it for you to make you understand. It's all the same frequency. It's all going to do the same thing. That's the way the tests continue to show it. Now, all right, we got four. Let's hit five. All right. This is pretty simple. We have an ultrasound piezoelectric disc at the top. 
We don't have a transducer. We just have the disc. What are you going to get? That's another frequency right there. We now have five frequencies. Those are the simplest frequencies we can get. Again, the way to make this thing work is it has to go the same. At some point when we multiply it out, it has to hit the same. I don't care if you put it in, uh, was it millihertz or whatever, megahertz. If you put it in kilohertz, everything has to line up on that pulse value. Just like that. At some point, it's got to pulse in the same. That's the trick. Now, let's talk about the other two, which you probably don't really realize. If you put high voltage on a magnet, it makes a sound. You say, well, I can't hear a sound because it's not in the audible range. There are sounds like that and frequencies like that in this machine. That's why they're hard to distinguish. Take a brushless DC motor and turn it on. Voltage on magnets. There are no speakers in it, but what happens? It starts singing to you. You say, well, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it does because it's a frequency in there. That's what I'm trying to convey here. It's the simplest way to convey it to you. Anytime voltage hits a magnet, you're going to get a frequency. Now, that right there is six. What is the one that you take advantage of that you absolutely forget about every time? How many of you have taken a uh, flyback transformer Put it in front of your TV and your TV distorts. Do you know why? 50 hertz. That's the frequency of your TV. 55, 60, somewhere in that range. You have a little bit of a range. Generally, when you make that frequency in your coil, it distorts your TV. <laughs> Again, there's a the frequency. We have seven frequencies right there. You can change the frequency of that coil. I've done that in the past. But just understand this, it's right there. Do we have to manipulate the coil to get that frequency? No. And here's why. I try to convey this to other people and they just don't understand it. Every coil is different. Every coil has different amount of amps that are allowed to go through it, and different amount of volts that are allowed to go through it. And you have to test each one. Each one of these coils will come out with a different value not in your hearing because you can't hear it because it's not in the audible range. It's how you see it. When you look at it and there's a lot of white in your flyback, what are you getting? You're getting a lot of amps in there. When you get a lot of purplish spray out of it, you're getting more volts than you do amps, a lot more. In the multiples of a thousand or more, it's just more. It's the difference in your coil. You have to understand that. Okay, now I only say that because when you're going to put this stuff in there, it has to be in static volts. It's just like putting a Wilmhurst on it, it has to be in static volts. It does not need to be in high voltage necessarily. That's the difference. You guys saw me do the paper lifter experiment, I got it to lift on static. What did I use? Two flybacks put together in series in order to get it. Why? Because my flybacks were putting out too many amps. So I had to thin out the amps and up the volts in order to get to that static state. That's why I talk about the flybacks in the way that I do. It takes a lot of experimentation to find all these things. I'm giving them to you for free. Here we are, seven frequencies. What do you get with seven frequencies inside the gravity flyer? You get a symphony. It's the same musical note I tell you that I hear every time I talk to the group or any time that I try to describe it to you. I put it in my last video as a sound. I'll put it in this one at the end. It goes <laughs> sounds just like an alien sound. It's the most described thing that you hear when UFO encounters go on. Strange sound. What is it? Well, here it is. I'm giving it to you. All seven frequencies are right here. We know that they're, they're here. We forget sometimes that they're in these things. But you have to realize that they're there. 
Add them up, you have them all. They have to work together. They work on a choppy, <laughs> choppy note. So you see everything on your oscilloscope go this way. Just like this, right? Okay, what happens when you put in seven different ones? You get here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then it goes down into the bottom portion, which it then it goes again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then it comes back up and it hits it again. It's a symphony that we're looking for. It is the absolute understanding of the frequency in this craft. That's why I say it that way. It just looks like a choppy thing like this. Goes down, chops. Everybody sees it on their oscilloscope. Nice curve. Nice curve every time. It's not that at all. Up. Do, 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 do. Down. Do, 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 do. Up. Just like that. That's what you're looking for. That's the exact sign you should see on your oscilloscope when you're looking at it. Sometimes the oscilloscope is great, sometimes it's a hindrance. Know when to use it here. Now, one other thing you want to do, if you want to identify these frequencies, and there's high voltage. I had somebody tell me this and I tried it and it works great. Take a tube, three foot tube. Take a mic, hang it on one end of the tube, right there in the center of it. Take the other one, put it right on your gravity flyer. We're making a cheap boom mic here, okay? It's going to give you the frequency through the tube. It's going to go to the mic. And it's going to come out on your frequency analyzer. It's as simple as that. You want to avoid the high voltage coming up and messing up your, your mic when you put it too close? Well, change the distance. Put it in that tube, just a cardboard tube. Go find your wife's wrapping paper. She's got an empty tube. Go take it. Take that tube, put it right there. Put the mic in it right there. Put it right next to your gravity flyer, and you're going to hear that frequency. Well, some of them you won't hear, but you definitely see it on an oscilloscope, okay, or a frequency analyzer. Anyway, I hope this guy's, I hope it really helps you. Some of this stuff is misunderstood. Some people ask, I keep getting the same question after every video. Why isn't it working? Well, it's not something you just simply plug into the wall. It's something that science is now starting to understand in frequency that we're now just coming around to. Please understand this. This isn't like you pick up a physics book and you say, well, let's just look up frequency. All the answers are right there. Well, if you don't do any of the tests to figure it out, you lose everything. The book only tells you the positive tests. What happens to the thousands of things you learn in all the negative tests? Well, they're not in that book. That's why I do the test altogether. I want to know everything about it. That's what's going to make you smarter. I don't need a quote from a physics book. I just simply need to do the test. They prove everything. No matter how far-fetched it is, that's the absolute proof you need. That's it. Anyway, I hope this helps you guys out. Have a great day. Like, share, subscribe, do all those things, man. I'll see you in the next one.